Oh, hey, I'm just sitting here with my uh, extremely large Dell monitor. Also, thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring part of this video. How am I going to get this? My dad thought it was a TV, by the way. How am I gonna get this into, pause, this? How does this, how is this going to fit? And my other problem is I want that Dell monitor to sit here for my standing desk. This is gonna be interesting. I feel like that's gonna be a video in itself. How to get this massive Dell monitor into here. We'll figure it out, we always do. Bigger monitor equates to better coder. That's true, right? Totally, it'll make me a better coder, I'm sure. I think it can fit, right? Like, I mean, the measurements, I think it's gonna work. I might have to make a separate video putting it together because it might be very entertaining. I can't even lift that box for goodness sakes. It's like a mini TV. All right, let's get back to misconceptions about coding though. One of the big ones I hear, especially as of recent, can you guess what it is? What is the point? AI is going to take over everything. I'm learning, I get so many messages saying, I'm learning these skills, Tiff. I'm starting with the basics, HTML, CSS, going to pick up JavaScript, but AI can do that too. So why am I learning it? And here's my response. It's not necessarily the typical response where it's like, you know, you have to learn the basics before you continue to learn further and get more skilled, but that is important. The reality is, you do need to know the basics, but I think even more so than that is, what is your end goal? Because if your end goal when learning to code is to build your own app or uh, become a programmer, then that's one thing. You really need to know the basics and you really need to know the fundamentals by spending time on that, even though AI can do it too. Because it is with that typical answer that having an understanding of the foundation that is built on, the technology is built on, is very key. Now, here's where my answer varies a bit though. If you are learning to code because you just want to understand what is going on, maybe you're a product manager and you're talking to engineers all the time and you're like, I need to know a little bit about code. I need to know what is going on under the hood, but maybe you don't need to know the fine details. One misconception I would say now, thanks to AI, is in those scenarios, you might not need to know the basics. You might be able to pick them up quickly, skim over them, and then go more into the, oh, I don't like this term, the meat. Sorry for vegetarians out there. The meat, the heavy stuff. And really lean on AI to help explain what is happening. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with utilizing technology that is available today to help us grow better. So it really comes back down to what is your purpose? What is your goal with learning to code? Because the way you learn the fundamentals will be very different based on that. Another big misconception when learning to code is that you need to memorize everything. It still takes me off guard when people ask me, Tiff, how did you memorize everything? How did you retain all this information? Short answer is, I didn't. There are so many resources that you should lean on or you can lean on to help you become a better programmer. Oftentimes programming and being a coder isn't necessarily about being this whiz of knowing everything, remembering everything and how to solve these solutions. It's more so about how to look for the solutions, feeling confident enough that you're like, you know what, I don't know how to solve this, but I will figure it out. And this is where tools like AI can come in, you know, ChatGPT to help you explain things. Also to using different resources that are free. For example, we often know that website redesigns are sometimes necessary to keep things fresh. Things like outdated designs, changing technologies. There are so many reasons that you might not only need to create a website, but also update an existing one. As I mentioned, when you're first learning to code, you can't know everything. You are not a designer, developer, product manager, uh, the list goes on. You are one person, you are learning the best you can and probably the fastest you can. For example, when it comes to website redesign, there are so many resources, so many things that go into it that you might not even realize. And it can carry risks if not properly planned. To reduce those risks, we need to carefully audit the existing site, set clear goals for the redesign, choose a suitable tech stack, prototype new designs, thoroughly test across devices, and so much more. I mean, you get the point, the list is never ending. 
And for example, for any redesign work, I've been using HubSpot's free workbook for redesigning my website. It goes through things such as auditing your current site, evaluating your budget, and so much more. My favorite section is how to audit your current website because oftentimes you don't know what you don't know. I'm looking at my site and I'm like, I think this is okay, but maybe it's not. So having a checklist of things to look for is super helpful. This is completely free, so make sure you go check it out and download it. I highly recommend it. I linked it down in the description. Another big misconception is that you need to be at a certain point for applying for jobs. And I'm gonna be careful with what I say here because yes, that is true. You need to be at a certain level to start applying for jobs, especially if they involve coding. But if you're not going for necessarily a developer role, just a job that you want to help stand out by understanding code. So an example of this is going back to designer or product manager. Maybe when you are applying for this role, coding isn't a necessity, but you know having it on your resume will help you stand out. It's something that not all designers, not all product managers, it's something that not all designers, not all product managers are going to have on their resume. So naturally, when you add it on, even if the person hiring isn't looking for a coder, they see that you took initiative to learn this skill, it's gonna help you stand out. But going back to why you don't necessarily need to feel ready to start applying. I often get asked, oh, how do I know I'm ready to start applying for developer roles or roles that involve coding? Once again, you don't know what you don't know. So for me, I, I felt this way too, where I was like, okay, I need to learn more, I need to learn more. And you have to be careful with that because otherwise what will happen is you get stuck in this circle that you never feel you know enough and then you never apply. You apply when it's too late. Start applying for jobs once you've learned the basics and you know, you can, you have a bit of a portfolio ready and be prepared, be excited to hear no. Be excited to hear rejection or now, now in today's job economy, nothing at all. But the point is you are putting yourself out there. You're taking a risk. That is something to be really proud of, something to really thank yourself for. So I always say, if you see a job posting you're really interested in, obviously if it makes sense to a degree, don't go and apply for uh, staff, senior software engineer and you've never been a software engineer in your life. But if you see a role, you're like, you know what? They're asking for one to two years. I've been coding now for around even under a year, but I feel like I have a good portfolio. What's the worst that's gonna happen if you put yourself out there? You never know. And even if you go through that interview process, feeling a little unsettled, it's experience that you will take with you for when you are more, when you have more knowledge and you have more skill sets and you will become a better interviewer. I really, really suggest don't get stuck in this cycle of never ending cycle of I'm not good enough, I don't know enough. Start applying. And the last one I really wanna leave with you is learning to code does not equate becoming a software developer. There are so many, so many roles that learning to code will open up for you or really help you stand out when you are going to apply for jobs. And if you want to become a software developer, that will open up so many doors as well. I guess what I'm trying to get at is, I think sometimes when people think they're committing all this time to learning to code and probably money. It has to equate to, I must love being a software developer full time and that is my career path forever. Speak it from someone who has had a wild ride with coding, you know, learning to code, becoming a software developer, senior software developer, leading a team, moving into developer relations where I was, you know, or am in, you know, doing a mix of technical and then soft skill things. It's always evolving and it will just open up so many doors for you. I think some of the best people or best career paths are ones that are very different. You don't have to uh, be a specialist your entire life in one area if you don't want to. There are incredible career paths if you really want to hone in on something, but you don't have to. And I think that's something that sometimes stops people from learning this skill is they think, well, why would I learn to code if I don't want to be a software developer? When in reality, because it's opening up a world of possibilities. The best product managers I've had, or even when interacting with the marketing team, the best you know experiences I've had is when they really understand the product. And you don't need to be a coding whiz to do that, but oftentimes being willing to understand what the code is doing to a certain degree will really help you be better at working with this technology. Working with the technology, explaining the technology, marketing about the technology, it's full circle. And that's something I really wanted to end this video with is coding does not equal software development. Coding equals opening up a world of possibilities. Wow, I feel like that could have been like a TED talk. Like I went on a rant there. I think it was a good one. Yeah, you go tip. 
Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful and valuable. I really wanted it to leave you feeling inspired to pick up this amazing skill. And you know, now with AI and so many different tools out there, there's never been a better time or an easier time to really pick up how to code. Speaking of that, make sure to go download HubSpot's free workbook. I love HubSpot, I'm obsessed with it. I use it for so many areas of my life. Right now I'm using it a lot at work for data analytics uh, and really getting down into the number side of things. And then in my free time, using these workbooks that are like, they're free, which is amazing. I linked it down below, I got you. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Oh yeah, leave in the comments other videos you wanna see. Thanks everyone. <laughs>